Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Get on the Bus, how to create a virtual library card on your smartphone. Uh, today's presentation will be presented by Jesse Severe. Morning, everyone. How's it going? Um, so I whipped this together because this was something that I felt personally that I needed, and working in the State Library, I was really, really interested to see how libraries can utilize these technologies. It's These are all um, off-the-shelf free applications available in the Android market, and also um, there are alternatives in the uh, Apple um, App Store. So if you have an iPhone, which people in Wyoming are actually starting to get at this point now that Verizon's offering them, there are uh, solutions that would also work along the same vein. And I do believe that for all of these apps that I'm going to mention today, there is an Apple um, version of them as well, so it would be a pretty easy transition to go between the two. Basically, the virtual library card isn't, isn't going to replace your regular library card. Um, they'll still be distributed and you'll still get the paper copy, it's still going to look the same. Um, but the thing about this is you don't have to carry it with you at all times. Everyone has their phone at most times, so you can use this as a supplement to your regular library card. Uh, and I've used it and, it and it works really, really well so far for me on my device. Um, when I did these, the, this, the screen caps on this I used, it's a uh, HTC Evo 4G. It's a Sprint phone. It's a little bit different than what Verizon has, although the new Thunderbolt, I believe, has got similar functionality. But that really shouldn't matter. All Android phones can take advantage of these features. So let's get into it. The first, app, uh, the first app that I found, and this is the one that will showcase the whole way through, it's called Cardstar. It's free, as you can see, and it's mainly used for rewards cards. We're going to utilize it for the library, but it, you know, if you have uh, Albertson's card or a gym membership or whatever, you can easily see some techniques to put your other cards in there too, which is really neat. But we're going to focus on the library side of it. This screen cap here is actually from the Android market on the device itself. If you want to find this app, all you have to do is open the market and do a search for Cardstar. Or and there's a few other ones out there, but Cardstar was the one that I found worked the best with our types of barcodes. So you want to open that up and right here is a install button and since it's free you click that and then there'll be a drop down of the permissions that are required. This is a really lightweight app. It doesn't ask for any private info or anything. So click accept permissions and it will install just like any other Android app. When you have it installed, go on your device, find it, and open it up. Oh yeah, and then this is another way that we can also download it, which a lot of people aren't necessarily aware of yet. You can go to the Android market on your computer and search up here in the search bar for the same app and this is on my desktop browser. You can actually install directly to your device from your computer with no USB cables, no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi. It actually sends a signal out through the cell network and will install it automatically on your phone. Amazing functionality and they just implemented this about two months ago. So it's definitely worth checking out for all sorts of apps, not just uh, the, what we're discussing today. But I have links to this um, towards the end of the presentation, but uh, this, is, this is amazing functionality. Really, really neat. So once you have the device installed, you can go ahead and open it. And this is the first screen that you're presented with. And they're going to ask you to set up your first account. There's a add button, and that really is about the only thing you can do on this screen, so click that. Once you get in here, it's it basically asks you to select a merchant, so if you did have an Albertson or Safeway card, you could do it that way. But uh, the scanning of the card is optional. It's really, really neat technology. It takes your phone's camera and scans the barcode on the back of your library card and then imports that data. I've had mixed results with this. With my device, I wasn't able to get it work uh, very repeatably, or it, it, it wasn't real reliable. So. An easier way to do it is actually enter your number in this membership thing. But first we want to select a merchant. And inside the list uh, there is libraries. So I clicked library and 
none of the libraries that we have in the state at this point are on the list. It's basically a usage study. They'll add them as they're used. So I just uh, go with other library down here. And then up here, I just punched in the number that I found on the back of my library card. Directly as it is, no spaces, no letters. It, it, it's just simply the number. And I titled it Wyoming State Library. That's simply what's going to show up on your screen. And the symbology, there are several different variations of the codes, but I do know that the, the barcode system that we're using uh, is Codabar. And it is the, this is the default. It's AA and Codabar. So it's really pretty simple to do that. And there's an easy way to check if it works. It gives you a barcode preview, and you just hold your the back of your library card up next to it and you can see if they match and mine did <laughs> so that was good and then I hit save and this is what you get when you save so this is what happens when you open the app you click the Wyoming State Library or whatever your library may be and this shows up on your screen and this is what you actually hold on the device when you scan it and if you rotate your device you get a little more unencumbered view and this image is actually rotated vertically for orientation but when you hold it sideways it works that way and you just hold it there and it's scanned with a handheld barcode scanner which I'll touch on in a little bit um, I did not have great luck with the self-checkout uh, stations so again this isn't a 100% bulletproof solution but it has worked in most of my testing so that's basically how you set it up. If we have a patron that comes in and we want to show them how to do this, the number one thing, instead of going through what I just said, is you want to be able to get the app on their device easily. There's a few ways you can do that. You can share it from your device. If you have an Android phone, you can basically open up your app drawer, click the device, or hit menu, and then it'll give you a list. If you hit card star, you can then send it to a mobile number, an email address, any of those things to be able to give it to the, the patron that would be there. Um, also, you can provide a download link on your website, and uh, they, that basically will take them right to the Android market on their phone, and then all they have to do is hit install. And then you can walk them to the rest of the setup process. But the coolest way is uh, these QR codes, 2D codes, and basically this thing over here that looks you know like a pixelated image it contains information and using another app uh, a barcode scanner on your device you point your phone at that the phone's camera and it decodes that information and puts that in and then basically it can take you to several places you know one being a website uh, the Android market is one of the best ways I've seen these used so if you had a uh, table tent with this image on it and somebody had the barcode scanner they could scan it and then instantly they're uh, brought to the Cardstar app in the Android market so that's really really cool stuff and this is the app that that I use as a barcode scanner again it's free I already have it installed in here that's why it says open and uninstall but basically it's one button you open the app and then it's got uh, an image with a red line through it and you just point it at whatever you need pretty cool stuff and I have a I have a link to this um, towards the end of this as well wanted to touch on scanner tech a little bit uh, most places the, the 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 more prevalent technology right now is laser scanner which basically re measures reflected light off of the light and dark bars the problem is is that with a glass screen on a phone you get some reflection that can screw these up we have one here and I have good luck scanning through my phone with it, but from what I understand and from what I've read, the CCD scanner, which is a charge coupled device, is almost bulletproof for these systems because it simply looks at contrast between the light and dark. I found a ton of them for under a hundred bucks um, and just as I was searching right before this, I found one for $13 brand new and that was just, the, I did a Google search for CCD scanner and that was under the uh, Google shopping results. So these are fairly affordable to implement and to make sure that this uh, is is much easier to transition so you don't have frustrated patrons because the thing that we showed them doesn't necessarily work all the time. 
So this is my contact information, and you can see on the bottom, we just ordered uh, newer business cards, and we put QR codes on them. And this is a, a much larger one. It holds a, a lot more information, so it has uh, name, location, address, phone number. If you do have a barcode scanner on your phone, go ahead and scan this. You can scan it right off the computer screen, and it works. And it will prompt you to either add it to your address book or text me or email me. Um, really cool way to stay in touch. And these are on the back of our business cards, so we're handing these out to uh, several of our staff at this point. But don't hesitate to get a hold of me if you have any questions about any of this technology or if you have any need any suggestions on other ways that we can uh, improve this. And here are some of the links that I discussed. These are market links, so these actually open on your computer and you can install to your device from there as long as you're logged into the same Gmail account that you use to set up your phone. So that's, a, that's all I have. I, if, do you have any questions? Yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch places here with Jesse and we're gonna open up this wonderful GoToMeeting software and if you have any questions go ahead and either raise your hand or uh, go ahead and put it there in the, in the questions box and we will do what we can uh, do to answer those. Uh, there's a couple questions that have kind of come in through chat. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to address some of these. Uh, Yvonne, actually, yes, you can do this on an on a iTouch, and that is something I did not test. I have one. I didn't think to do that. That's interesting. The only um, thing that I would see that could be a problem is, you know, the scanner using the camera, because not all iTouches have cameras. But if you are going to enter it manually like I did, that would, wouldn't be a problem. That's actually a really interesting solution because a lot of people do have those and that, that's nice because it takes out the, uh, the cell contract issue of it. So it's much more accessible to a lot more people. Um, Cindy, as far as the symbology goes, it was Coda Bar and it was uh, the A and the A. Those are basically two different tags that you can put in the front and the back. Um, that was the one that worked the best for me. Uh, the thing is, you may have to experiment with it. I, I honestly didn't have any issues. So if that doesn't work, go ahead and contact me and we can discuss it a little bit more. Um, and Era, we don't, our, our, our catalog is not mobile compatible at this point. I, I assume that's what you mean by the cat. And, and we're looking towards solutions for that at this point. I mean, that's a pretty big undertaking, so. But uh, when we do, I'm sure we'll have a couple webinars on how to use that. And Mike, as far as the self-check systems went, um, those are laser scanners. And they, I was having issues getting, uh, basically there was a lot of reflection going on in there. I only tested it on one or two, actually at the Laramie County Library here. And you know, maybe with some contrast uh, adjustment on the screen, you know, brightness, things like that. We may be able to get that to work a little more repeatable, but I, I didn't have great luck with the self-checks, and that's because it's the laser technology. Um, in the future, maybe some CCD solutions may, may work there. And is there a save or does it automatically load? I There should be a save button whenever you find the... Um, find the symbology that you want, you've entered all the data, it, there should be a button to save it. And then as soon as you go back, there'll be a list of the cards that you have uploaded. So for instance, I have one for the gym, I have one for the grocery store, and one for uh, both the county library and the state library. Oh, and that is the one unfortunate thing about this program, you can't edit. I, I, I really wish that you could. Uh, at least you can't edit the barcode. Um, it, it, the best luck I had was to actually go back and start over, which is, which is a bummer. But, um, you know, and, and again, you may try, you, you should also check out uh, the key ring application. It has a little more polish, but I wasn't able to get both the county library and the state library to work consistently with that one. But that one is just called, it, I actually have a, a link to it on the, on the thing for key ring you can check that one out too and it's it's much much prettier um, and also if it may just be that the camera on my Android device wasn't very happy with scanning the code 
it's it's neat functionality. I didn't include it because it doesn't work all the time or for everyone. But basically, you just hold your camera up to your library card, your physical library card, and it will uh, import it the best it can from there. So you know these tools aren't. There's no bulletproof solution. Ultimately, we would like to have a system to where we have our own application for the uh, state library system, and all you have to do is basically enter your number and you have you know access to your checked out books and catalog and you have a virtual card that works all the time everywhere but this is this is um, a preliminary look at some technologies that could help out fantastic uh, does anybody else have any other questions for Jesse raise your hand again or type it in the text chat well thank you everybody for participating and if you do have any questions feel free to give Jesse a call or shoot him an email and we'll be sure to get all of your questions answered. Uh, I hope this was helpful, and like Jesse stated over and over again, there, uh, this is just the beginning of where the WILD system will be going.